एस टी बांगला मानवता समाधान you know we've heard you so much before and you know you've done a very extensive interview with our uh, editor and so we are uh, familiar with dr zakir naik so i was a familiar with express that amongst various press that is there the one who have not could be out of context one of the few press in the express <laughs> but it's you know there are two points here one is about you know religion and the other is about politics yes. and the line has between the two has got so blurred uh, especially i mean all religions but particularly islam and when you say Osama bin Laden doesn't matter for Islam. At the same time, I mean, for a large part of the world, he's become identified with the religion. He may he's, he may not be a religious man. He's, he may not be a religious man. They call him the Sheikh. He may be a wealthy, uh, you know, billionaire from Saudi Arabia, whatever he is. But you know, he and his religion have become identified with his politics. Why? Why only he? Why not Hitler? Also, yes, Hitler. No one said Hitler is a Christian and Christianity. No, no, no. I mean, Hitler's politics. What about LDT? What about LDT? What about Ulfa? No one says Ulfa is a Hindu organization which is there. But whichever Muslim. organization which uses religion to propagate its politics gets identified by its religion. Then Ulfa uses religion. I don't think so. What is the agenda? See, the agenda that's, that's ethnic. So, that's the, that's an ethnic. I R A. Uh, what is I R A? IRA is a very you know catholic uh, do they say catholic terrorist organization no, do this why not IRA is a more danger to UK than any other muslim in the world according to me they have killed hundreds of people evident it is a fight between the catholics and the protestants but why does in the media say that IRA is a christian terrorist organization why don't they say IRA is a catholic terror? why so why these double standards that double standards have thing so for me For me, Osama bin Laden is not at all represented in Islam. Mm-hmm. He may be good, he may be bad, and neither am I telling any Muslim. Look at me. I am representing Islam. No, I never say that. I never claim myself also to be the apt representation of Islam. The apt representation of Islam is our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Neither do I claim that. Neither do I claim that. You know, I'm the best. Look at me. I say, don't look at the Muslims for understanding Islam. Look at the Quran. Analyze the Quran and the things of the Prophet. Like I say that if the latest car in the market, there's a Mercedes 600, maybe yes, and a person does not know to drive the car, he sits behind the steering wheel and he bangs up the car. Who will blame the car or the driver? It's the driver. If you want to really test the car, look at the specification. What is the speed? What is the safety measure? What is the braking system? What is the average? What is the top speed? So if you have to understand Islam, read the Quran and the things of the Prophet. If you really want to test that, the car put behind the steering wheel a driver who's an expert, and the best exemplary Muslim, if you want to find, is Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him. It is not even Zakir Naik. Please don't get me wrong. I don't say look at me. I am not a best example at all. I may be following Islam better than some of the Muslims. I may not be following as good as the other Muslims living today. I am what Almighty God has given me the capacity to answer the allegations against Islam. So that's the reason I, if you know my background, I was a stammerer. I used to stammer. In school, the teachers used to give me just pass because I used to stammer. Mm-hmm. When I realized that when I started speaking regarding truth, my stammering vanished. So that is the reason they know that why have they targeted me is because they know very well that, as was mentioned, even quoted by Manchester Evening News, that the most sought-after public speaker in the Muslim world is a black man. They think that. And even the UK government knows very well. They have all my tips, and hundred percent the intelligence of UK, of Canada, of USA. They have all my views very well. Not that they don't have. And I cannot say that they have done it unknowingly. So what is the agenda behind this exclusion order? Irrespective of what the agenda is, we are going to fight for justice. 
and we believe not doing the same thing what our enemies are doing. What we have done yesterday, my lawyers gave them a notice that we gave a notice to Theresa May, Home Secretary of UK, that we give you 24 hours to reverse your decision. This is all your thing was illogical and we gave them proofs. Maybe you made the decision in a hurry. We give you 24 hours to reverse the decision and allow Dr. Zakir Naik or face us in the court. So we are giving them time which they did not give me. Even after 24 hours, I have told the lawyers, give them more time. They should not say that Zakir pulled us in the court immediately and we had no time to do research on him. So give them more few days and then next week, hopefully, after that, we we'll see to it that the case comes as early as possible so that they don't say that the case came in a hurry. No, I know that they are doing research. It is mentioned in the letter that they are doing research on me since three years. In the exclusion order, mm -hmm. in the exclusion order, it says that there is no right of appeal against the Home Secretary decision to exclude you from the United Kingdom. The decision is reviewed after no later than three years. On the basis of exclusion, your visit visa has been revoked. You should therefore not attempt to travel to UK as you will be refused entry. Now they gave this purposely because they knew the argument with Majid Mehman gave. That is the speech he said in 2006. So why have they refused now? So to avoid that embarrassment, they said research is being done for three years. But they failed to realize that they are digging their own grave. If they are doing research for three years, why did they give me a five years visa? They could have given me a six months visa. To give a five years visa means we are 100% convinced at this moment that this man has got no problem. He will be good for UK at this point in 2008. So if they are doing research in three years, what they should have done? They should have given me a six months visa, which they gave earlier the first time I entered. Then they give two years, then they give five years. So this is itself they fail to realize that even, as you said, that I'm a debater. No, and, no, I'm a, no, and I'm a debater. Second, and this is second. logical. No, this is logical. So what they are trying to defend themselves and therefore they have given the full context. But when she gave the full context in my letter, why didn't she give the full context to the UK media? Isn't it double standards? She's giving the full context to me. Why? Because we gave them the context. So that in the court she cannot say that I don't know the context. So that at least they may have some chance to maybe present the case. Now, the reason they have given this here is because the law team has told them. I know that. But they fail to realize that even when they give argument, we have a counter argument. That if I agree with them that they are doing research for three years, why did they give me a five years visa? They should have said, okay, fine. They have a right to give me six months visa. Why? This proves that this is a false statement. 100% false. Trying to say that when the case is put up, I am giving them my points. I have got no problem. Because I believe the truth will find you in. Unless there is, unless, unless the politicians interfere. The second point I was, you know, uh, making there was about, I mean, your ability to argue and your ability to present, uh, you know, a case, talk about examples and, you know, the examples that have been quoted here and there. And you have a very large following across the world and people listen to you and all kinds of people listen to you. You don't know, you don't have any control over that. Good, bad, ugly. Good, bad, ugly. <laughs> uh, and, uh, you know, your name has been mentioned in the past in two or three instances where some people who were either blamed for certain attacks or suspected of certain attacks said that they had listened to you and they were inspired by you. One name is Najibullah Zazi and before that, Kafil, Dr. Kafil Ahmed from Bangalore. And there was also a lot of talk about that uh, Riha, what is the Sheikh guy? Rahil Sheikh. Rahil Sheikh from Bombay. Uh, you don't control these people. They are out there in the in the in the in the wild west, uh, if you want to say that. And we don't know th their intellectual abilities. And you are talking about the Quran. You are talking about Osama. You are talking about what is terrorism, what is not terrorism, who should fight against what, and whether knowingly or unknowingly, or maybe they are misunderstanding you. These people are somehow coming under the influence of your intellect. And it ends up linking your name with their name and what they end up doing. So why are, perception, why, why are they my fans? Uh, no, we don't know. Uh, perception is, uh, you know, that built that Dr. Me. Zakir Naik's okay. thoughts influence these people. As you said that I am very strong with that. I'll give an analogy. If I say that the maximum sick people are present in the hospital, so will you say the hospital is responsible for the diseases? 
Infections can spread in the hospital. Fine. But is hospital responsible for the major diseases? Or for, you can say, it's responsible for controlling. Just because you find, I agree with you, infection can spread. And how infection spread, thank you for helping me out. I'll tell you that. I agree with you. Infection can. But as a whole, you cannot blame the hospital for letting the disease spread. You say hospital mainly is a center which controls the diseases and prevents the human being from dying. In the same case, I have mentioned maybe a thousand things about Islam. And the way I present, it is so logical, people start believing it. But it's not necessary, everyone will believe in all the thousand things I present. So what I understand, these people are very happy that Zakir presents Islam, the teachings of Islam, you should not rob, you should not molest a woman, you should not rape a woman, you should be modest, and you should be honest, etc. Out of the thousand things I've said, I've also said that killing innocent people is wrong. So they may agree with maybe 900 things of mine, 950, and they're influenced with the other people who are misquoting the scriptures. That's a very good question you asked me, thank you for that. They're misquoting the other scriptures, so they may agree with me 95%. Now, there are many speakers who I'm fan of, who I don't agree 100%, but I'm the fan. Like the person, Sheikh Ahmed Dida, he's the person who changed my life. But yet I don't agree with him 100%, yet I'm his fan. So what you have to realize that these people are very inspired to come close to Islam. But at the same time, they may not agree with few of my arguments and they may agree with other people's argument. And I do know, there are some Muslims who are trying to influence young Muslims and other Muslims also to prove to them that killing innocent people will take you to Jannah. I'm aware of that. So by the UK government banning me, what they are doing actually, they are stopping my voice who's so influential. If my voice wouldn't have been there, suppose you have 100 now, or 1000 now, it would have multiplied by 10 times, or whatever it is. For example, all these Muslims love the Prophet more than me. In the same breath, you also have to say, all these Muslims, 100%, they may be loving Prophet Muhammad thousands of times more than me. In the same breath, then you have to be in Prophet Muhammad. When they respect Prophet Muhammad's believing teachings, does it mean that Prophet Muhammad spread terrorism? This analogy you should know. What I'm trying to say, they love the Prophet a million times more than me. They read the Prophet, but some people have misguided them and have tried to prove that Prophet Muhammad encourages, which is totally wrong. Encourages killing innocent human people, which is totally wrong. The same thing, I being 0.0001 person like the Prophet, no way close to the Prophet. He is far superior to me. I am no way close to him. I know I am trying to compare and I cannot compare. I am just a person who promotes the teachings of the Prophet. And while doing that logically, people have accepted it. But in the same breath, what I say is that these people, because they have the DVDs of mine, that proves that they consider me to be a logical person. But surely, they may be disagreeing on my point on terrorism. So what they say, this man is good, at least he's speaking 99% things correct, I'm his fan. But I disagree with that one point where, you know, Zakir, I don't claim to myself to be a scholar. He's right, but he's a human being. He can make a mistake. This point is wrong. So we agree with XYZ, who claims mm -hmm. that killing innocent people. So this absolutely, there is no mincing of words. But at the same time, even I am saying, be careful. What the media says is always not the truth. Because today the media has said that Zakir Naik is a terrorist. So now this gives more proof for me to stick to my statement. Even the full world says, unless I'm convinced. If the day I'm convinced, the day I get proof that Osama bin Laden did it, I promise I'll tell the full world that I've got proof, I may be right or wrong, and he is a terrorist. The day I'm convinced, I have no interest in wasting my time. This is a man of truth. When I don't get scared of the UK government, why should I get scared of Osama bin Laden? When I'm not scared of the US government. That's what Mahesh Bhatt said yesterday, that he is proud of an Indian who's locking horns with the big bull UK government, who have the power, who have the money to throw anyone out. But I know on my side, I've got Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, almighty God, and he's sufficient. I believe more in the court of the hereafter than the court of this world. But I have faith that we'll prove ourselves in this court also, as well as the next court in the hereafter. আকাশের রং ধনু আমরা জীবনে বহুবার উপভোগ করেছি লাল নীল সবুজ আকাশি বেগুনি হলুদ 
নানা রঙের সমাহার আমরা দেখেছি রং দুনি কিন্তু জীবনে রং ধনুকে কখনো কি আমরা বিশ্লেষণ করে দেখেছি আমরা জীবনের উত্থান পতন চড়াই উতরাই আনন্দ বেদনা ক্ষোভ হতাশা সম্পর্কে বিস্তারিত জানার চেষ্টা করব দেখুন জীবনের রং ধনু কেবলমাত্র পিস টিভি বাংলায় জানুন কত কার্যকরী ভাবে মুমিন বান্দা নিজের প্রতিটি কাজকে ইসলামী রঙে রঞ্জিত করে জীবনের রং ধনু আজ রাত দশটায় আপন সম্প্রচার সকাল সাড়ে আটটায় বাংলাদেশে পিস টিভি বাংলায় ডায়ালগ ডায়ালগ discussion discussion debate 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 rebuttal rebuttal conclusion conclusion eliminate misconceptions about religion get enlightened witness dr zakir naik in a battle of words dekhun shommuk shamore proti rioshpotibar rat 9 tay apuno samprachar sokal 10:30 tay bangladeshe pis tv banglay পরিষ্কার করতে হবে মনের ধুর তা না হলে চোখ জবান করতে পারে ছোট বড় অনেক ভুল শরীয়ত বিরোধী বহু কাজ আমি মোহাম্মদ হাশেম মাদানি চোখ ও জীবের আপদ থেকে বাঁচতে চান তাহলে দেখুন চোখ ও জীবের ফল শুধু পিস টিভি বাংলায় চোখ ও জীবের কুফল পরবর্তী অনুষ্ঠান পিস টিভি বাংলায় দের ইজ আদার কোয়েশ্চেন অবাউট ইউ নো গোয়িং ইউ নো বিয়ন্ড দিস কোয়েশ্চেন অফ টেরর এন্ড ওসামা এন্ড অল অফ দ্যাট অবাউট ইউর ইউ নো ভিউ পয়েন্টস অন ইউ নো থিংস লাইক উইমেন এন্ড ওয়েস্টার্ন উইমেন Uh, I mean your you know point I mean there are debates I don't know because these are all things that have been printed and I've yeah, read right, about thank it you. thank so, you for that uh, is the reason I get that is the reason I need to uh, you know ask you face to face what is the truth and what is not the truth I mean uh, there are statements which say uh, western women wear very skimpy clothes that's why they attract rape that is what Dr Zakir Naik says according to times no according to okay. whatever not just times there are a lot of other you know uh, everybody picked up from there everybody is picked up from here there wherever number one number two it, it says that you know there is another quote about the you know pork and pig eating uh, you know westerners i mean these kind of comments get you know reproduced and you know uh, repeated uh, on and on uh, something about you know how women and men should you know socialize what kind of clothes women should wear what kind of clothes men should wear the supremacy of one religion versus the supremacy of another religion islam is supposed to be the supremest religion according to you according to the statements so what is the truth truth is that there are many rhetoric thrown in the media if you go to the context any logical person just goes to the context and sees my full dvd version not on the youtube and the dvd is available throughout the world and they themselves will not require an advocate to tell what is right what is wrong as far as the statement never ever have i said never ever in my life have i ever said except quoting the article and i quote the article i have to say that that western women they are most susceptible to rape because they believe in clothes what i say now they are inferring and it's a common example i give that saying that women should be dressed up modestly and i say that if they're two twin sisters very beautiful equally beautiful walking down the streets of bombay we find in bombay as a bombay if i say i'm in saudi arabia as a saudi arabia find saudi arabia can say because different but if i say i'm in dubai as a in dubai if i am in maldives as a maldives if i'm there in europe as a europe and i go ahead to say that both the twin sisters who are very beautiful equally beautiful one twin sister in the islamic dress code complete body covered except the face and hands up to the rest being seen and the other twin sister is wearing western revealing clothes western clothes like shorts or skirts or with a low neck and if both are walking down the street together and round the corner there is a hooligan who is waiting for a catch who is waiting to tease a girl my question is which girl will it tease will it tease the girl wearing the islamic hijab or will it tease the girl wearing the western clothes western clothes 
and the obvious answer everywhere throughout wherever i've gone they said the one wearing the mini skirts and shorts so based on this they infer i think that western women are any women whether it be indian women whether it be arab women whether it be western women whether it be eastern women any women who are revealing clothes according to me they are attracting those people who can molest them so dr nag the problem is not with the woman or the clothes the problem is with the man correct now we'll come to that later on now my argument is the same times on the 30th of may the argument we can go i've got no problem with people differ but i have problem with people who have double standards the same times call sunday time to sunday call sunday times in uk they have an article on 30th of may saying hate preacher should not be let in britain blah 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 kind of force the government to ban and they quoted this besides saying that every muslim should be better is quoted by me they said he is a western woman because they were very willing clothes they attract the molesters and and rape. the same paper just more than a year back on the 9th of march 2009 they had a survey see this is all facts they had a survey it's times online and we went we also do our research you know as the islamic research foundation it says women should be hit for wearing sexy clothing in public one in seven believe hit hit huh? and they have given many references which i'm not bothered about that whether i agree or disagree secondly hit it actually says it there should be her husband says it should it i'm not bothered about that and it blames women for rape in another article that came on 21st of november 2005 same same sunday time i'm not going to any of the paper women still held to blame for rape many people believe that flirting or wearing revealing clothes is an invitation to sexual predators again by alexander frien the survey also found that 26% of adults believe that a woman was partially or totally responsible for being raped if she was wearing sexy or revealing clothes but do, you, no, but do you think that is a sensible argument no not sensible argument my argument is whether right or wrong we'll discuss tomorrow mm-hmm. or we'll discuss later my argument is that they said zakir is a misogynist mm-hmm. a person who hates women because he says that western women wear revealing clothes they are susceptible to rape so that means all these 26% should be called misogynist if they say that i got no problem what they should say in the article dr zakir naik belongs to the 26% in britain who says that wearing sexy and revealing i don't use the word sexy because you know i'm a slang which i want to avoid of seen words i only said revealing revealing clothes so if they had said that i would have no problem even if they say zakir believes to 1 in 7 so why is it double standard and it says in the survey many women are amongst this 26% is it right or wrong we we'll discuss tomorrow fine what i'm asking you that why are they having double standards what they should say that even the times is a misogynist even alexander fin is a misogynist all these 26% britishers to agree that wearing sexy revealing clothes is responsible for molestation and rape of the women are misogynist then i have got no problem so why the double standard now coming to your second statement that is in the man responsible the man is responsible tali dua se bachti 100% and no, it's not, not rape not rape no one is station and rape man is responsible yeah man is so you can't say tali do haath se bachti hai there i'm telling you i'm telling you why i come and i give my reason har case mein ne in many cases but most of the cases of rape if you analyze either the people knew each other before you see the indian case and i've done a survey that's my feel what you have to realize tali dua se bachti kyun because the more responsible of course is the man it is not the woman but because that the reason in quran see what they quoting me out of context what i say people talk about women right and about hijab for women allah subhanahu wa ta'ala almighty god in the quran first speaks about the hijab modesty of the man then for the woman this is my style and i quote the quran surah nur chapter 24 verse number 30 say to the believing man that whenever he looks at a woman and any unashamed thought comes in his mind he should lower his gaze so first is a prohibition for the man and then it says to the woman then it continues say to the willing woman that she should lower her gaze and guard her modesty and display not a bit except for the pure ordinary of and draw head covering over her chest except in front of the husband the father so this is what quran says so quran first puts the blame on the man So why are they quoting me out of context? Then they should say I'm against men. I don't know what the word is used for. In English, a misogynist is for a <laughs> for a person who hates women. What is the person called who hates the men? I don't know. Androgynist. And <laughs> so what I should realize that why the double standards? I have got no problem people disagree with me. That means they are selectively 
targeting me because I'm spreading the religion of peace. Same person, same time. If suppose some other paper gave this report, I can say maybe they are not aware of what Indian Express gave, you know, so I can exclude same paper. That means they have double standards. So I hope that answers your question. First thing to blame first is the man, partly. Because, no, because Quran doesn't say that if a woman is not wearing blue clothes, the Quran says lower gaze. So if he lowers the gaze, where is the question of molestation? Where is the question of raping? And Jiva said that the Quran also goes to the extent of saying that if there is a nam haram, who's, you know, not your sister, or girl, you can't even touch her. Jiva said molest and rape. If she is your nam haram, if she is not your sister or your mother or not your wife, you can't even touch her. Leave her side. Leave her side. Rape. So what they do, they just pick up out of context. Thank you so much uh, for your time. Uh, it was a very uh, intense and I enjoyed talking to you. I hope you enjoyed talking it's to us. It's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. जार मध्य निहित आल्लर निर्देश ईमान के शुद्ध करारौहिद के प्रतिष्ठा करार्क के उच्छेद करारसन जमील मुखलिसुर रहमान मदनी अहमदुल्लाह बिन मोहम्मद दिलावर हुसैन मुफ्ती काजी मोहम्मद इब्राहिम हारून हुसैन उपस्थापन आए गुरुत्वपूर्ण अनुष्ठान कुरान कहनी कल रत आठटा पुन सम्प्रचार सकाल साढ़े छटायदेश marriage or divorce what's islamic ruling nikah solution or problem heaven or hell uh, there is a misconception you choose beauty wealth family status virtue decide what you want decide your choice be sad or be happy it's your choice join dr zakir naik dekhun ardhangini natitangini proti robibar rat 6:30 ta ap puno samprachar sokal 9:30 ta bangladesh e bis tv bangla e नबीजी मुहम्मद सल्लल्लाहु अलैहि वसल्लम एर मोनी मुक्ता अब्दुल्ला इब्न मसूद रादियल्लाहु अनहु थे के बोलनी तो रसूलुल्लाह सल्लल्लाहु अलैहि वसल्लम बोले चल तुमरे जोखुन तीन जन एकोत्रे थाक बे तो खुन एक जन के बाद दिए दो जने चुपे चुपे कथा बोल बेना जो तो खुन उन ननु लोके शाते सालाम अध्याय अनुच्छेद नश चौद हदीस नम्बर पाँच हजार चारश बस